then and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere on the 18th of April in 75. Hardly a man is now alive who remembers that famous day and year. He said to his friend, if the British march by land the sea from the town tonight, hang a lantern aloft in the belfry arch of the North Church Tower as a signal light. One if by land and two if by sea, and I on the opposite shore will be ready to ride and spread the alarm through every Middlesex village and farm for the country folk to be up and to arm. Then he said good night and with muffled oar silently rolled to the Charleston shore just as the moon rose over the bay where swinging wide at the morning sleigh, the Somerset British man of war, a phantom ship with each mast and spar across the moon like a prison bar, and a huge black hawk that was magnified by its own reflection in the While his friend through Allian Street wanders and watches with eager ears, till in the silence around him he hears the muster of men at the barrack door, the sound of arms and the tramp of feet, and the measured tread of the grenadiers. Marching down to the boats on the shore. Then he climbed the tower of the old North Church by the wooden stairs with stealthy tread to the belfry chamber overhead. The start rolled the pigeons from their perch on the sombre rafters that round him made masses of moving shapes of shade by the trembling ladders steep and tall to the highest window in the wall where he paused to listen and look down a moment on the roofs of the town and the moonlight flowing over all. Beneath in the churchyard lay the dead in the night encampment on the hill wrapped in silence so deep and still that he could hear like a sentinel tread the watchful night wind as it went creeping along from tent to tent and seeming to whisper all is well a moment only he feels the spell of the place and the hour and the secret dread of the lonely belfry and the dead for suddenly all his Thoughts are bent on the shadow with something far away, where the river widens to meet the bay, a line of black that bends and floats on the rising tide like a bridge of boats. Meanwhile, impatient to mount and ride, booted and strode with a heavy stride on the opposite shore walked Paul Revere now he patted his horse's side now gazed at the landscape far and near then impetuous stamped 
the earth and turned and tightened his saddle girth. But mostly he watched with eager search the belfry tower of the old North Church as it rose above the graves on the hill. Lonely and spectral and somber and still. And lo, as he looks on the belfry's high, a glimmer and then a gleams of light. He springs to the saddle, the brighter he turns, but lingers and gazes still full on his sight. A second lamp in the belfry burns. A hurry of hoof in a village street, a shape in the moonlight, the bulk in the dark, and beneath from the pebbles in passing a spark, struck by a steel flying furious and fleet. That was all, and yet through the gloom and light, the fate of a nation was riding that night, and the spark struck out by the steed in his flight, kindled the land into flame with heat. He has left the village and mounted the steep, and beneath him tranquil and broad and deep is the mystic meeting the ocean ties, and under the odor the scurrits edge. Now soft on the sand, now loud on the ledge, is heard the tramp of his steed as he rides. It was twelve by the village clock. When he crossed the bridge into Medford town, he heard the crowing of the cock and the barking of the farmer's dog and felt the damp of the river fog that rises after the sun goes down. It was one by the village clock when he galloped into Lexington, he saw the gilded weather clock swim in the moonlight as he passed. And the meeting house windows blank and bare gaze at him with a spectral glare as if they already stood aghast at the bloody work they would look upon. It was two by the village clock when he came to the bridge in Concord town. He heard the bleating of the flock and the twitter of birds among the trees and felt the breath of the morning breeze blowing over the meadows round. One was safe and asleep in his bed, who at the bridge would be first to fall, who thought they would be lying dead, pierced by a British musket ball. You know the rest in the books you have read, how the British raiders fired and fled, how the farmers gave them ball for ball, from behind each fence and farmyard wall, chasing the red coats down the lane, they crossing the fields to emerge again. Under the trees at the turn of the road, and only pausing to fire and load, so through the night rode Paul Revere, and so through the night went his cry of ram. To every middle sex, village and farm, a cry of defiance and not of fear. A voice in the darkness, a knock at the door, and the word that shall echo forevermore. For born on the night wind of the past, through all our history to the last. In the hour of darkness and peril and need, the people will awaken and listen to hear the 
pouring hoof beats of the steed and the midnight message of Paul Revere. A midnight message of Paul Revere.